ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه واله وسلم عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله خير نبي ارسله ارسله الله الى العالمين بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين الى يوم الدين اما بعد ايها المسلمون اوصيكم ونفسي المذنبه بتقوى الله تعالى وقال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وبعد indeed all praises due to allah we thank him we seek his help we ask for his forgiveness from the evil of our own selves and the evil of our actions whoever allah has guided then none can misguide and whoever allah has left to go astray then none can guide and i bear witness that there's no lord no deity no authority worthy of worship but allah and that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam is his messenger O you who believe fear allah be conscious of allah as he deserves to be feared and do not die except in a state of complete submission to him Today bi idhnillahi ta'ala we're going to speak about a noble trait a noble characteristic that is found in the hearts of the pure a noble trait that as we're going to see you'll find it in the heart of prophets you find it in the heart of siddiqin the truthful confirmers of what they truly believe and you find it also as a trait of the people of taqwa and this trait is that of forgiveness this trait is that of forgiveness is such a noble trait that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave himself numerous names that allude to this meaning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called himself al ghafir the forgiven the oft forgiven he also called himself al ghafur the extremely forgiven he also called himself al ghaffar the extremely extremely forgiven right he also called himself al afu and we know in ramadan this is one of the names we repeat oft especially in the last 10 nights where we ask allahumma innaka afuun o oh allah you are indeed the one that is pardoning by nature you love to pardon so this trait of forgiveness what is it if you look at the dictionary there are many interpreted there are many um, definitions that are given one is to grant pardon or remission another is to give up all claim on account of something and another is to cease to feel resentment towards someone that has offended you to what to cease to feel any resentment towards someone that has validly wronged you okay so if we look at this meaning what does allah tell us of this in the quran we just said at the beginning you find this straight in the heart of prophets in the story that allah called ahsan al qasas in the quran the most beautiful of stories it's the story of prophet yusuf alayhi salam prophet yusuf alayhi salam what was done to him by his brothers when he was at a very young vulnerable age he was put in a pit out of jealousy they took him away from his father put him in a pit and left alone right he went through a lot 
right? And if you read the story of Yusuf, you, you'll see all of the things he went through. Yet, when he was in a position of power and authority and ability to exact revenge, what did he say? لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم said no reproach, no blame, no censor on you today, may Allah forgive you. Right? At a point where he could have said, what you guys did to me when I was young, when I was helpless, go to jail and stay there, rotten, forever. What did he say? لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم No reproach on you today, may Allah forgive you. Right? That is our role model. Also, we said it's found in the heart of a Siddiq, right? In the Quran, Allah tells us in Surah An-Nur concerning when the hypocrites started spreading rumors about our mother Aisha. May Allah be pleased with her. And one of the people who, although he was not a hypocrite, but also joined in that was Mislah, who was somebody who Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu used to give money monthly, regularly, right? He relied on Abu Bakr for his sustenance. And then when Allah absolved our mother Aisha of what they accused her of, Abu Bakr, in anger he said, I will not spend any more on this person. I will not spend any more on Mistah for what he did. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in addressing the Siddiq, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, what did Allah say? Allah said, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim wa la yata li ulul fadri minkum wa s-sa'ati an yutu ulil qurba wal yatam ulil qurba wal masakin wal muhajirin wal muhajirin fi sabilillah وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Allah in addressing Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, Allah said, And let not those of you who possess grace and abundance swear against given those to the near of kin and the poor and those who have migrated for Allah's sake. And they shall, Allah says, Let them pardon and let them overlook and turn away. And then Allah asked a rhetorical question. A question which if you ever feel difficulty in forgiving others, maybe it's a question you should ask yourself. Allah said, أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Do you not wish that Allah should forgive you? When Abu Bakr heard this and it was recited to him, his, hair, his eyes was flowing with tears and he said, of course, I would want Allah to forgive me. Right? Even though it was within his right. But when faced with the verses of Allah that urged him, that urged him to forgiveness, he said, Bala, of course. And he returned back to giving mistah, you know, what he used to give him before. And as we said, this is also found in the hearts of people of taqwa. In the Quran, Allah says, سَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ عُدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah says, race with one another towards the forgiveness of your lords towards the forgiveness of your Lord and towards gardens which are wide as the heavens and the heavens and the earth prepared for those who are God conscious and then Allah goes ahead to describe them says those who spend during times of plenty and during times of constraint and those who cover and conceal their anger. But that's not the end. And those who pardon people. When Allah described them with these traits, He says those who spend 
when they have and when things are slightly constrained and those who conceal their anger and those who forgive people. And then Allah says, Allah loves the people of excellence. So we see that this trait of forgiveness is something that is found in the hearts of people that Allah loves. So what is it in practical terms for us? Okay, what is it in practical terms to forgive others? Let's take the minimum level of forgiveness, right? The minimum level of forgiveness is that you give up all rights to revenge or that you remove from your heart all rancor, all hatred, all dislike, all everything that makes you want to seek revenge or retribution, you give it up. Why do you give it up? For the sake of the Lord of the world. Not because the person deserves it. Not because they've been calling you and asking you for forgiveness. Why? Because you know you're going to meet a Lord that loves to forgive. And if you meet that Lord that loves to forgive with a forgiven heart, what do you think is going to do to you? If you meet the Lord of the world with you having forgiven so many people that you had the right not to forgive, how do you think Allah is going to deal with you? Come out to Dinu to Dan. As you deal with others, so would you be dealt with. So the first minimum level is that you, if someone offends you, you forgive them, but you don't necessarily resume relationships with them. You just forgive. At least in your heart, you're no longer carrying this burden. Not because they deserve it, but because you deserve it. Not because they deserve it, but because you, your focus and your direction is on Allah. Okay? And you do it only seeking Allah's pleasure. That's the lowest level. Then there is a higher level than that. And that higher level is that after you've forgiven such a person, you return back as though they never did anything to you. You resume normal relationships with the person. So if you used to visit the person twice a week, you go back to visiting them twice a week. If you used to give them gifts at certain times of the year, you go back to giving them gifts. Whatever it is you used to do to them before this offense, then you go back to doing the same thing. This is not something that is very easy, and this is why it's only found in the hearts of those who Allah loves. And with this level, the Prophet Muhammad in the Quran, Allah says, Allah said, say to those who believe to forgive those who do not believe in the coming of the days of God, since it's for Allah alone to repay people for that which they used to do. And then Allah describes some special people in Surah Shura. He said, وَإِذَا مَا غَضِبُوا هُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ when they are made to get angry, when they are angered, they forgive. That's a special trait, right? And Allah praises this. Now, there is a higher level than that, right? And this is where not only do you remove all negative traits or emotions regarding the person's offense, but you actually start to treat that person as though they were a close friend. Almost in a better way than you used to treat them before. Where does this come from? Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Fusilat, He said, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Allah in this surah, in this verse, makes a declarative statement at the beginning. He said, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا سَيِّئَةُ said, evil and good are not equal. That is, Allah acknowledges that when someone harms you, it hurts. It's not the same as someone doing good to you. 
Allah acknowledges this and this is necessary if you're going to forgive someone. Acknowledge that emotion. That's why Allah says, Wala tastawi. They're not equal. But then Allah sets the bar for the believers. What's that bar? Repay with that which is better or repay with that which is excellent. That's the bar. That's the challenge. If you've ever traveled to Morocco, when you see people trying to break a fight, you hear them say, Billeti, Billeti, Billeti Allah. Right? Referring back to this verse, that is, repay with that which is better. You can be better. Try to be better than what they've just done to you. That's the challenge. And Allah, in describing this challenge to us, what did He say? That you treat the one between which you had enmity, the one who you really had a reason to dislike, you had enmity between you and the person, you treat them as though they were a close friend. Right? That's what Allah said. Waliyun Hameen, a very intimate friend. What did Allah say about this as well? No one can truly attain this except those who are truly patient. Except those who are patient. Those who are patient are those who their focus is on Allah. Those who are patient are those who, when a calamity befalls them, what do they say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. They know that everything is from Allah in the first place. So their focus is not on the person that's offended them, but they say, what does the Lord of the world require of me in this state? Right? What does Allah want me to do with this person that has just tested me? That has just done something so wrong to me? Let them forgive and let them pardon. Right? So this is the highest level. And may Allah make us people of Ihsan. May Allah make us people that are able to taste this. And in conclusion, because there are some people that might not be able to attain this. One day on the authority of Anas bin Malik said that Umar who saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day smiling such that his incisors were showing. And he said, may my parents be your sacrifice, O oh, oh, oh Messenger of Allah. What is it that is making you smile? And the Prophet Muhammad said that on the day of judgment, two servants will kneel before Allah. And one of them who has been wronged will say to Allah, O oh Allah, this brother of mine wronged me. They offended me. And as such, please give me some of his own good deeds. Give me some of his deeds so that I can take back my right. And Allah will say, but what if he doesn't have any good deeds left? And then he will respond, then put my bad deeds on his plate. And then Allah will tell that person to look. And then he will look and he will see a palace filled with gold and silver and amazing things. And he will say to Allah, which prophet or siddiq or martyr has this place? Allah, say, Allah will then say to him, this is for the person who pays its price. And he will say, who can, pray, who can pay such a price to deserve something so great? And Allah will say to him, that is for the one who forgives his brother. And then he will say, then I have forgiven him. And Allah will say, take your brother's hand and go to paradise. This is what made the Prophet Muhammad smile. This is what he wants of his ummah. So let us be people who in this world will remove rancor from our hearts of people that have offended us. Because removing rancor from our hearts is a prelude to entering paradise. Because Allah says, ma fi qulubihim min ghil. We remove all rancor from their hearts. Tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. Wa qalu alhamdulillahi ladhi hadana lihada. Right? We remove all rancor from their hearts, flowing right? underneath the gardens, par the rivers, and then they will say, all oh, praise is due to Allah that guided us to this. So may we be people who in this world, we forgive others. 
We overlook other people's faults. We overlook those who have truly wronged us, not because they deserve it, but because we are servants of God. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى عباد الله اعلموا أن الله أمركم بأمر عظيم بدأ فيه بنفسه وثن بالملائكة القدس وقال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك مجب الدعوات اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا ورزقا واسعا حلالا طيبا وعملا صالحا متقبلا اللهم تقبل منا وانصرنا اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا وارزق ثمرة اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أعلى وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاه